Good morning. We're going to read Just Plain Fancy today by Patricia Polacco. There's the AR code for when we're done. This book is about two little girls who live in an Amish community. The Amish are very simple. They don't use electricity. They don't use cars. They live by the land and they keep everything that they do very plain. And this book is about that. Let's read Just Plain Fancy by Patricia Polacco. I noticed there was a little bit, sorry, of a clue on this page. Let's see what that clue has to do with. Caleb and his two daughters hurried along Lancaster County Road in their buggy. Cars whizzed by them, but they paid no mind. Clop, clop, clop went the horse's hooves on the pavement. Papa, Naomi asked, why don't we have a car like the English? It's not our way, child. We are in no hurry, he said as he drew up the reins and slowly directed the horse into their farmyard. I kind of like that he said we're in no hurry. I feel like all I ever am is in a hurry. While their father unharnessed and watered the horse, Naomi and Ruth skipped toward the hen house. The chickens were Naomi's responsibility. She saw to their feeding and watering, as well as the collecting of their eggs. Everything around here is so plain, Naomi complained. Our clothes are plain, our houses are plain, even our chickens are plain. It would pleasure me just once to have something fancy. Child, know me, you oughtn't be saying such things, little Ruth scolded. As Naomi and Ruth searched the field for eggs laid outside the hen house, they spotted a very unusual one nestled in the tall grass down the drive and behind the hen house next to the road. This egg looks different from any I have ever seen, Naomi said quietly. It's still warm. Let's put it in Henny's nest. This one needs to be hatched. She gently picked up the egg and eased it into her basket. Although it was a little bigger than Henny's other eggs and a little darker in color, Naomi gently tucked the egg into the nest while Henny and Ruth looked on. You're so good with chickens, Ruth chirped. I just know you're going to get your white cap this year. Mama says you're ready. Naomi was proud of her chickens and the way she raised them. The elders were coming for a working bee or frolic in the coming summer, and Naomi wondered whether her parents might present her with the white cap on that day. Her thoughts were interrupted by Ruth's voice. Ain't we pleasured, she said. You wanted something fancy, and now you've got it. Now, they keep talking about white caps, and these two girls have blue caps. I wonder, I wonder what the white caps mean. Let's read to find out. As the days passed, Naomi and Ruth checked Henny's nest constantly. Every day they peered over the edge of the crib, watching for signs of cracks in the shells. Then one day the eggs hatched. Look at the little chick from the fancy egg, Naomi, Ruth squealed. That egg was fancy inside now, wasn't it? said Naomi. Fancy. That's just what we'll name this chick. Fancy, 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 Ruth sang out as she jumped about. Naomi smiled and clapped her hands. All that afternoon, the girls stayed with Henny, watching and studying their special little chick. Weeks passed. Henny's chicks grew quickly and were soon scratching around in the dirt. They had all lost their yellow down feathers and had grown bright white ones, all of them except Fancy. Fancy looked very different from the others. There was no doubt about it. This chick wasn't plain. Hm. I wonder what kind of bird this is. 
One afternoon in the wash house, Naomi and Ruth overheard Aunt Sarai talking to Cousin Hannah about a person in the neighboring Amish community. She dressed too fancy, Sarai said. She had to be shunned. Is it wrong to be fancy? Naomi asked. Indeed, yes, snapped Hannah. We are plain folk. It is in our laws, the ordnung, that we must be plain. What does shun mean? Ruth asked haltingly. Someone who is shunned is shamed in front of the elders. After that, friends and neighbors are instructed not to speak to that person. They are no longer one of us, Sarai said with authority. Naomi and Ruth looked at each other and hurried outside to hang up the washing. Naomi felt botherment inside. She's worried. As soon as they were finished, the girls ran to the hen house. What are we going to do? Ruth asked. Fancy's too fancy to be Amish. And then Fancy ruffled up his feathers and did something that took their breath clean away. Notice how the author is not really showing us what's happening? We're having to think about that in our mind. About what might be going on here? We'll have to hide him until we know what to do, Naomi said finally. The elders will be here for the frolic tomorrow. Still don't really know what a frolic is, but I guess the author is going to tell me, so I'm going to keep reading. He'll be shunned, Ruth whimpered. Maybe we will be too. They put Fancy into another part of the hen house and locked the door. The next morning, the neighboring Amish folk arrived for the frolic. It looks a little bit like a big picnic. The men and boys helped add a stable onto Vlecky's barn. They worked hard in the sun while the women folk cooked and gossiped. Naomi and Ruth helped serve the food, pour lemonade, and thread needles for the women who were quilting. This should have been a happy day for them, but the girls were not pleasured because they were sad with worry about fancy. So a frolic is kind of when all of the Amish get together for a very large picnic or meal and they help each other like they were helping to build a barn for the Vleckies. When we had served the last ladle of lemonade, Naomi started toward the hen house. Just then she noticed the open door. But before she could get there to shut it, Fancy darted out and ran toward the gathering, flapping his wings. Oh no, Naomi called out. This is all my fault. I wanted something fancy. I should have known better than to make that kind of wish. Tears ran down Ruth's cheeks when she saw what had happened. Poor fancy, she cried. Now he'll be shunned. Over, under, around, through, Naomi ran after fancy, trying to catch him before anyone noticed. That's about the time that fancy decided to head straight for the elders. He flew at Martha, the oldest member of the gathering. Adjusting her glasses, she gasped as he flew over her head just before landing on the clothesline where the quilts were airing. Please don't shun him, Naomi cried. I did this. I made him fancy, she sobbed. At that moment, pleased with all the attention, Fancy ruffled his feathers and did for the guests what he had done for the girls in the hen house the day before. Those who weren't speechless were stunned. Wow, how beautiful. Do you know what that is? Yeah, it's a peacock. Dry your tears, child. It was Martha who finally spoke. This isn't your doing. This be God's handiwork. Only he could think up colors like that. You mean you aren't going to shun him? Ruth asked. One can only be shunned for going against the ways of our people, Martha continued. This is no plain old chicken. This be one of God's most beautiful creations. He is fancy child, and that's the way of it. All who were gathered there rejoiced in fancy's beauty. I believe you have this coming, child, old Martha said. She held out the new white organdy cap. Your family believes you have earned this well, and I agree. Not only have you given good and faithful care to your flock of chickens, but you have raised one of the finest peacocks I ever did see. 
Standing proudly amidst the gathering, Naomi held Fancy in her arms. She had learned many things that day. And although no one ever quite knew how Fancy came to be hatched by Henny, it was never questioned. Plainly, it was a miracle, and sometimes miracles are just plain fancy. I really, really loved this book and how responsible and caring the little girls were. They didn't want to be shunned, even though that was the law of their, of their people. It didn't make much sense to me. It sounds, let's face it, a little bit mean. But they have their laws and their ways, and they all live like that. And if you want to live differently, then you have to leave their group and you go live out in the rest of the world like we live. So when she got her white cap, what do you think it meant? Yeah, I think it meant she was kind of a grown-up now. It was kind of her mark of responsibility. I hope you enjoyed the story.